my name is Jorge Castillo. I'm the clinical director for the Bing Center for Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. And today I'm going to be presenting this poster. This is our long-term data on previously treated patients with Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia who received ibrutinib as a single agent. So in this study, we included 63 patients with symptomatic Waldenstrom's Macroglobulinemia, and they received ibrutinib 420 milligrams by mouth once a day. In this study, we have that about three quarters of the patients were men, and then we have a separate uh, different groups of risk here, and about a third of the patients had a high risk uh, disease. The serum IgM was about 3,500, and the hemoglobin was around 10. So it's a very good symptomatic group. In this study, we have divided patients in three genomic groups. One of the groups is a group that has MYD88 mutations, but without CXCR4 mutations. These are 36 patients. There are the double mutated patients with mid 88 and CXCR4 mutated patients, about 21 patients. And then we have a smaller group of patients who do not have any mutations on mid 88 or CXCR4, that's about five patients. This distinction is important because the efficacy of ibrutinib seems to be driven by the mutational profile. Specifically, when you look at the, at the overall responses, in all patients it's about 90%, but when you look at the mid-88 only group, it's 100%. That's probably the highest response rate for any type of regimen for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. If you have the mid-88 CXCR4 mutation, the response rate is about 86%, so just a little lower. And if you have a wild type, then it's about 60%. That's a little bit lower as well. When we think about major responses, that means at least a 50% decrease on serum IgM, we're talking about a 77%, but the mid-88 mutated patients had 97% response rate versus 67% in the CXR4 mutated and 0% on patients with wild type disease. So the depth of the response to ibrutinib really depends on the mutations. Besides this, the progression-free survival also uh, differs depending on which uh, mutational group you belong to. If you look at the entire group, the median overall survival has not been reached to almost four years. However, if we separate the patients in three different groups, median only, double mutated, and double wild type, we see there are some differences. The mid-88 only group has gotten to the five-year mark with about 75% uh, progression-free survival, while the patients with CXF or mutation, half of those patients already progressed by about four years. And if you will look at the mid-88 wild type patients, half of those patients progressed in less than two years. So, Ibrutinib, I believe, is one of the best treatment options for patients with mid-88 only disease. Uh, it's very effective also on patients with CXCR4 disease, but the progression-free survival tends to be a little shorter. And in patients without mid-88 mutation, I think the response rates are really poor with a very short overall survival and probably not the best option for those patients. It's important to note that the mid-88 patients are about two-thirds of our patients. The patients with CXR4 mutations are about a third of our patients, and only a minority, fortunately, are double wild types. Thank you for your attention.